oldguytalks.com is all about being a better man. Join me on this kick-ass journey. Exclusive stuff for members only in the Old Guy Cave. Opt in now. This is Oris the Old Guy from www.oldguytalk.com talking to you about the inauguration a few days afterwards. Uh, the old guy hasn't been feeling so well. Had a cold, uh, second cold in the last few weeks, and uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, I'm trying to get out of the men, trying to get better here. Uh, lots of crazy things have happened since the inauguration. A few things I'm going to spend some time, just a little bit of time on. The Women's Day, the spontaneous Women's Day march. Uh, turns out over 50 other organizations that participated are funded by, guess who? George, baby, George Soros. So what a surprise. So-called spontaneous, not so spontaneous. Uh, paid anarchists uh, creating disturbances in the, in the streets. Uh, I hope that our Justice Department looks into this uh, because I do believe that there is a crime that's being committed here, a uh, conspiracy to commit something, which I'm sure is there. Uh, so let's talk about the inauguration here and a couple things. Uh, very emotional day for many Americans, including myself, uh, chill up my spine, little tears, elation, lots of things going on that day. Um, one of the things I noticed was as the president was standing there, uh, at that time he was president-elect, he was by himself, everyone else had been walked down the uh, aisle to get into their seats, and he was standing there. And you could tell <coughs> that while he had known intellectually, you know, just like many of us, you know, sometimes you get into a big moment that's coming up and you've been thinking about it, and while you know about it intellectually just before you get into it, the whole visceral nature, the whole emotional of it, part of it hits you. And you could tell that by how body language that he was really taking it all in and experiencing that great moment when he realized that this was actually happening, this was a reality, and it was happening now. Uh, it was a great thing to watch and see. Uh, I did not see CNN at that time, but I think that was the time that Chris Matthews was worried about the length of his tie and the fact that his jacket was open. Uh, so Chris really knows how to focus on really important stuff. Uh, some of the, the noble things, the, the religious readings uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the inauguration, Reverend Samuel Rodriguez spoke about standing up to those that would ridicule you. And I think uh, pretty much right on point for what's going on, what has been going on, and what will be going on in the future. Uh, Pamela White Kane prayed that God bestow wisdom. Uh, I think those were very, very appropriate prayers and right on point for what was happening. Uh, you know, President Trump laid out his agenda, and uh, I don't understand where the gloom and doom part of it came out. Uh, I highlighted several parts of the inaugural speech for myself, which I'm going to review some of the highlights, I think. And uh, my wife encourages me to get the New York Times uh, among other newspapers, and uh, I got it. And I checked out their highlighted portions of the speech and my highlighted portions of the speech. And guess what? There was very little overlap. There was very little overlap. And uh, they focused on when the, where the president laid out the challenges, but they didn't focus on where he laid out the solutions and the, and the uh, possibility of a better future. So let me re go over with you a few of the things I thought was very important. Uh, he said that Americans want great schools for their children, safe neighborhoods for their families, and good jobs for themselves. These are just and reasonable demands of righteous people and a righteous public. But too many of our citizens, but for too many of our citizens, a different reality exists. Mothers and children trapped in poverty in our inner cities, rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape of our nation. An education system flush with cash, but which leaves our young and beautiful students deprived of all knowledge and the crime and gangs and the drugs that have stolen too many lives and robbed our country of so much unrealized potential. That to me is compassion. That to me is understanding what is going on in our country. The bad things are going on in the, some of our parts of our country. And the solution is here. This American carnage stops right here and stops right now. Every decision made on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. 
We will bring back our jobs. We will bring back our borders. We will bring back our wealth, and we will bring back our dreams. We will seek friendships and goodwill with the nations of the world, but we do so with the understanding that it is the right of all nations to put their own interests first. Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand the, the problem with that. It seems pretty reasonable to me. But if you are a regressive loon, uh, reasonable is not part of your skill set. goes on to say, we were protected by great men and women of our military and law enforcement. And most importantly, we are protected by God. Now, this part about the God thing, I'm going to tell you that uh, I'm sure that one, the regressive loons are yelling about separation of church and state. Now, I understand, you know, God is not allowed to protect America, according to them. God is not allowed to protect America. And I'm sure that the ACLU has a lawsuit already going or started planning on going soon to prevent God from protecting America. That's just, that, that's just going to go on. Uh, goes on to say, whether a child is born in the urban sprawl of Detroit or the windswept plains of Nebraska, they look up at the same night, the, the same night sky. They fill their heart with the same dreams, and they're infused with the breath of life by the same almighty creator. Your voice, your hopes, your dreams will define our American destiny, and your courage and goodness and love will forever guide us along the way. Boy, that sounds pretty uh, positive to me, don't you? Do you? I, I mean, I don't, see any, I, don't, I don't see any sign of Hitler in here. And it uh, goes on. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And yes, together, we will make America great again. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless America. Boy, that's controversial. Ooh. You know, uh, one of my favorite sites I like to go to is Chicks on the Right, and uh, they uh, have a nice little post there on, on their website. It, and let me quote from it. It is obvious President Trump does not, rec does not apologize for Christianity, and we can probably expect to see a White House Christmas card this year with the words, Merry Christmas on it. Now, won't that be nice? Time to order one of those cards. Get one of those White House ornaments. Uh, those are great little things. So, for some reason, people are having problems with this America first. I mean, really. Uh, you know, the ever shrill uh, Rachel Maddow and the totally delusional Chris Matthews called it Hitlerian. I don't know what speech they were reading. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I'm just, that's totally mystifying me. Um, you know, I had to go back to some convoluted logic to get that point. Van Jones, who uh, had wanted to have Venezuelan-style press controls here in the United States when he was in the, during his short tenure in the Obama administration, stated that the America First concept will make America an ordinary country. Uh, I don't think so. You know, the only thing that's going to make America ordinary is people like you who don't believe in American exceptionalism. Uh, that's not, you know, I just totally lost on me, but half the stuff he says uh, is, is kind of whew, goes over my head. Uh, and then there, of course, is uh, not to say that uh, we don't have loons that are uh, uh, Republicans or quote-unquote conservatives. Uh, so let's, from the, na from the Never Trump people, uh, you got Tr Car Charles Krauthammer, uh, who talks about zero-sum game, has to go back to the 50s and 60s and talk about Cold War stuff, and I don't really understand, Charles. You're just missing the whole point. Um, you know, it says NATO countries are terrified. Well, I don't think they're terrified, but they're realizing that we're not going to be carrying them anymore. That's the truth. We're not going to be carrying them anymore. Let me give you an example. The uh, NATO treaty, which uh, Trump says, you know, we got to sit down and talk about this again. It's, we got to sit down and talk about it. And he's got all sense. There is a part of the NATO treaty that says the countries in NATO are supposed to send 2% of their GDP for protection, for self-defense. Currently, only three countries in NATO are doing that. You got to tell everyone else, they got to step up. They got to step up and do their fair share. I, oh, I like to use that word, fair share. When I, uh, gosh, it's nice to be able to use one of those libtard words. Fair share. Uh, and then, of course, the ever-growing, more irrelevant Bill Crystal, um, you know, 
he he made himself very very much irrelevant during the election, and ever more so now. He called President Trump's speech vulgar. Vulgar? Come on now, vulgar. Uh, America first is vulgar. Was he supposed to say globalism first, America second? Is that, is that, would that make you happier, Bill? Bill, I, I'm really worried about you because there was a time that you actually had some things to say that uh, were of value, but I don't think so anymore. And uh, you may consider, you know, the, once uh, President Trump reworks the health care plan, uh, I think you're going to be able to get some help, uh, some psychiatric help, which I think you need. Either that or there might be a provision that you can hire one of those deep programmers in Utah to help you out because I think you really need some serious help. Uh, you're, you're kind of, uh, you kind of, lo you're losing it, dude. You're totally losing it. And, uh, you know, and, uh, but I got to tell you, there, there are sometimes all, all the, uh, uh, all the people on CNN are not total loons. And I got to give credit to David Axelrod, uh, former campaign manager for President Obama. Uh, I think a lot of times he calls it straight. I mean, he will sometimes put a little, Obviously, why, why would he put a little uh, spin on it? But he called this speech right. And this is what he said. This was a full-throated, as has been said, populist manifesto. As he lit this town on fire, he made very clear that he believes it's America first. We're going to protect our borders. We're going to protect our jobs. We're going to essentially draw a line around the country and fight that fight. And he laid down the gauntlet. I think that's a fair appraisal of the speech. I don't think there's anything wrong with how he said that. Um, so... A few little sidelights, a few little, one interesting little sidelight. Uh, and this, again, you can go to this the chicks on the right. Uh, there's a, a link to this uh, in the text below. Uh, so, <laughs> Bill Clinton just can't help himself. Um, there's a very awkward, uh, almost minute where Bill is obviously ogling. Oogling? Is it ogling or oogling? I'm not sure. Uh, the Trump women as they're, as they're uh, getting ready to sit down for the inauguration. And uh, Hillary catches him. And the beauty of it is he doesn't even notice that Hillary is pissed. And she's catching him looking at the women. <laughs> and it's just like, she just like, and then she just like gives up and goes, oh well. I'm surprised she didn't smack him or something or step on his, step on his foot while she was standing there. But it was pretty, pretty funny. You can see that video there. Uh, and of course, uh, be, be, be between all the vile stuff that occurred in the Women's March, the so-called Spontaneous Women's Day March, in the vile category, uh, we got a tweet from Sat Saturday Night Live writer Katie Rich. That's right, she tweeted, Bear will be this country's first homeschooled shooter. Uh, you want to talk about vile, disgusting? Uh, Katie, you have a vile and disgusting mind and totally inappropriate. Kids are off limits. Kids are off limits. And uh, just totally horrible. Uh, folks, if you want to let Katie know what you think about this, you can tweet her at Katie, K-A-T-I-E, Mary, like Mary, M-A-R-Y, Rich, R-I-C-H. Katie, Mary, Rich. Tweet her to let you know, let her know what you think about that tweet and how vile and disgusting that is. And uh, so, uh, also a few things. Climate change, uh, the, the uh, climate change page on the White House, the official White House website is gone. That's right, folks, it's gone. Things are changing fast. Actually, I think that happened like right after uh, the president got inaugurated. And uh, also, the uh, Sean Spicer really lit into the press uh, about this MLK bust that was that they said was removed, which was not not another case of fake news. Another case of fake news occurring, uh, in, and uh, you know it was retracted, but the damage has already been done because many people already believe it. They never see the retraction, and uh, so I think uh, the bust of William Churchill on, on, on the unknown is back in the White House as it should be. So, folks, this is just beginning. As you can tell by what happened after the inauguration, uh, the fight is just starting. And there's things that we got to do is one, got to speak up, got to speak about the stuff that's happening, about the fake news, the, uh, 
the Senate confirmations to get those going fast. You got to keep on writing your congressional people, your senators, especially in terms of the confirmations. And this fight is just starting because the uh, progressive loons realize that this is their last stand and uh, they're going to be desperate. They're going to do everything they can to keep this going. And we got it. We have to win for the sake of our country. So, folks, I'm going to end this with Make America Great Again. America first. This is Orsi Old Guy from www.oldguytalks.com signing off. And remember, create a kick ass life. Opt in and get my daily cartoons I post every morning, my political cartoons, among other things that are important to the quality of your life. Take care. Opt in and encourage other old guy assholes like you to opt in also.